Shrek the Musical at Drury Lane. Oh, God. I literally went and saw Shrek the Musical. And you know what? I bet I felt the entire time like I was the most cultured person ever. Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual American and UK citizen. And in this video, I'm doing part two of reacting to my journal from 10 years ago when I first moved to the UK. So the only reason I'm doing this video is because a lot of you mentioned that you really enjoyed seeing me look back at my old self. Um, I didn't realize it would be that entertaining or interesting for anybody who wasn't myself, but you guys enjoyed it. So there's quite a few posts that I hadn't gotten to on that video. So I thought we'd just finish it out and um, basically expose my 19 year old ramblings to the internet. We're just gonna go ahead and get started and I will share my screen. Okay, so the first one that I could find was called Music of the Night, which is a very artsy title. I feel like I really worked on those titles, um, definitely relating to Phantom, which I think I saw at some point, possibly I talk about in this post, that would make sense too. I'm still the same person 10 years later. So that would make sense to what I was trying to go for. Anyway, so here we go. I know I always start my posts with statements like, today I headed out to such and such because it was such a clear day and it's hardly ever clear in London, already complaining about the weather which is starting to lose its impact because if you look through my pictures, it seems as if London has never seen a cloud. Oh, on the contrary. Don't be fooled though, don't be fooled. Apparently I wasn't fooled, that's good. Don't be fooled though. I don't usually take my camera with me or have grand adventures when it's raining or otherwise this blog would be filled with dreary pictures and then I'd have to write captions about how Big Ben doesn't look as good when it's gray outside and then we'd all be depressed. Oh. 19 year old me, the, the beginning stages of seasonal depression, but I'm too excited here to really care. And I'm just making jokes about it. It is true though, like multiple things don't look as good in the gray. Like when the light is very flat, it just looks totally different. I remember when we were buying our current house, we saw it in the sun, I think. And the area just felt like, oh my gosh, like, I don't live in Buckingham Palace, but it was like, this is nice. Gray day hits and you're like, this is a dump. Um, so Big Ben looks better in the sun, hot take. But anyway, today I headed out to the River Thames because it was such a clear day. And seriously, it is hardly ever clear in London. I'm like, help me. Somebody help this Florida girl, help. As I have mentioned before, the more the sun shines in London in the winter, the colder the temperatures. Did I just make that up as my own weather fact? Is that definitely true? Um, I, I clearly, I think I'm a meteorologist here. According to weather.com, today felt like 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow night, <laughs> also, why was I saying 28 degrees Fahrenheit? The only people who read this were like my mom and maybe a couple American friends, but I'm so cultured here, so I'm making sure they know I'm not talking in Celsius which I still don't understand Celsius. Um, tomorrow night, we're supposed to get one to three inches of snow, but we'll see if that happens. Spoiler alert, it did happen. My journey began with a stop at the London Bridge. I hope I didn't mix up the bridges. I took a few pictures, but honestly, the London Bridge was just a regular bridge that Londoners used to get places. <sighs> okay, so London Bridge and Tower Bridge. Two different bridges, but oftentimes people will think that Tower, what is known as Tower Bridge, they'll call London Bridge. London Bridge is boring. It's just a, it's just a regular bridge. Tower Bridge is the one that you're thinking of when you're thinking about London Bridges, but a lot of people don't know that. Just the ways down the river from the London Bridge is Tower Bridge, which I'd seen for a few minutes when we went on a bus tour three weeks ago. That's where I took that picture of me with the bangs slash fringe in that purple coat. Oh, look at this picture. Tower bridge in the sun, in the, look at that blue sky. Nice. Good job. I ate the lunch I packed while sitting on the bank, watching the boats and birds and people float down the river. Oh, so cute. Then Tower Bridge and I got up close and personal. Mm, girl, don't be getting too up close and personal. Um, artsy photo. Fun fact, 10 years ago, I remember, I 
didn't have, did I have a smartphone at the time? If I did have a smartphone, I didn't in the UK. So today, when I worked with study abroad students, everybody just uses their smartphone smartphone from America. They change out the SIM card to a UK one typically while they're here and done, that's easy. Back in the day, we used to get what we called burner phones, like we were about to embark on some like sketchy drug deal. Um, and they would cost like five pounds and it would have a top up SIM card in it, a UK SIM card of like 10 pounds worth of credit. And that's what we would use when we were in the UK. So I remember I took all of my pictures on an actual digital camera. These are not taken with a phone. They're not good pictures. I'm not claiming that that's any better. Obviously today, smartphones could take much better pictures, but I remember when I'm talking about going out like with a camera, this was before you have, I had my, my phone as my camera in my pocket. So there you go, 10 years ago. Here is the London skyline from Tower Bridge. That looks nice. After having fulfilled my bridge quota for the day, I continued walking over Tower Bridge and into central London to find St. Paul's Cathedral. Very beautiful cathedral. Oh, look at this. We've gone black and white. I think we went black and white before too. I genuinely edited this to make it black and white for my personal blog that nobody read. That's cute. I didn't go inside because you have to buy a ticket for 12 pounds. Oh God, I put the pound. The pound sign should go on the left like the dollar sign goes on the left, not 12 pound sign. But clearly in my head, I'm thinking like 12 pounds. So I wrote 12 pound sign. Um, I didn't go inside because you have to buy a ticket for 12 pounds. Also, cheap student alert. It's like 16 pounds now for students. So should have gone when it was 12. Um, um, do you know how many coats I could buy for 12 pounds? This was a reference to a coat I bought at Primark for three pounds, which I think I mentioned somewhere in this blog. Um, okay. On my search for free things, I found these silver fixtures, which can make any person look more artsy than they are in real life. Self-awareness, we like it. See, instant hipster. Oh my God. Look, look at me. There's literally a woman over here who's like, who is this? Oh well, I was having fun living my best life. Speaking of artsy, my friends and I bought cheap tickets to see Phantom of the Opera. I knew it would probably be that at Her Majesty's Theater tonight. Why did I put that in quotes? Um, so that is how I ended my day. I've seen Phantom once before, but this was 1000 times better than I remembered. Here's a picture of the interior I took before the show started. This is so cute. I just feel like I feel so much affection for my 19 year old self who's going around. Definitely. I like, snuck this picture in when I felt like I wasn't supposed to before the show started because I thought the theater was so beautiful. You just go in with your, uh, just everything seems so amazing. I mean, objectively, everything I'm seeing is amazing. The theater looks beautiful. St. Paul's is a beautiful cathedral. Tower Bridge is beautiful. But I just remember being in such awe of like everything. Um, and I do remember going to see Phantom with her and I have seen it once since then. So I've seen it three times, but not any time recently. I don't know what my plans are for this weekend. The one day is going to have to include homework because so far I have really only fulfilled the abroad part of study abroad. Whoops. That was definitely a lie. I was very homework and school conscious. There's no way that I was going to be like, oh, whoops, had homework, didn't realize, like, I, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I was a goody two shoes to my American teachers. Not a suck up, though. I hated people who, if you try to get your grades changed, don't do that. But I was very conscientious about my schoolwork. So I think here I'm trying to be a little bit, like, cooler than I actually was. Um, <laughs> whoops. Definitely all your essays were already already written. Okay, let's see what else we can find. Here's a nice picture of Holland Park Muse. I remember being very interested in the Muse because they are very, they're like beautiful cul-de-sacs. Um, okay, this one says, oh, I believe in yesterday. Bet nobody's ever used a Beatles lyric as a title about something in the UK. 
I'm happy to report that the past few days have been, as they all are, amazing and unforgettable. Side note, if you are watching this and you are about to embark on expat life or studying abroad, I just want you to know that they're not all going to be amazing and unforgettable days. Um, and it's going to be fine because what I'm not writing in here, I may write about homesickness at some point, but I'm sharing like beautiful pictures that I'm taking, loving being abroad, which I did. But also one time I cried on the bathroom floor while calling my best friend being like, I can't do this. I hate it here. Get me out of here. And I'm sure I didn't write that in this blog. So I don't like when people just share their highlight reels. Um, so just know that you're going to have a great time, but it's okay if not every day is like straight out of a movie. But in this post, I guess that's what I'm getting across. Sunday morning, I woke up relatively early and decided to take advantage of the weekend sun, always with the sun. Nothing has changed. Always mentioning the sun. Um, by discovering Holland Park, a scenic area in West London. I genuinely don't think I've been to Holland Park since I went this time. It is beautiful, but I just haven't been back. Um, so that's a kind of bad picture of it too. And also I talk about the sun, but it doesn't look very sunny here. I wouldn't put this on the Holland Park brochure is all I'm saying. As is typical of London parks, the birds run the show. I guess that's kind of typical, particularly in Hyde Park near the lake. But I don't necessarily know if I'd say that about all London parks. Um, this particular park was home to 10 or 15 peacocks who were less afraid of me than I was of them. I was standing behind a fence when I took this picture, but as I later learned, the fence is only a facade, SAT word right there, as the peacocks can roam wherever they please. Get out of my business, birds. That would be a really nice picture if it was in focus. From Holland Park, I took the tube to Piccadilly Circus, which looks like New York's Times Square, except it's smaller and classier. I'm fairly sure I hadn't even been to New York at this point in my life. You can see where it says good service and Waterloo and City. Those are the updates on how the tube is running at the moment. I will hold to what I said, though, having been to New York more times now and for longer, that Piccadilly Circus is a smaller and classier Times Square. A lot classier um, and a lot smaller. Let's see what they were advertising at the time. Let's see some buses. Hello and McDonald's. Okay. Samsung. What I would say high and day, but I think people here say high and die. Do you say high and day or high and die? Comment below. And some sort of maybe a movie ad. I don't expect success. I prepare for it. Or is that an alcohol ad? Unclear. You can also see some very stereotypical British people here in their all dark winter getup. Yesterday, I worked most of the day, which doesn't really make for an interesting blog post, but then I was pleasantly surprised to hear that a London friend, I like how I name dropped that I have a friend in London, had an extra ticket to a show near Trafalgar Square that night. Before meeting him, I walked through Trafalgar Square, which is iconic London, true, and home of the 2012 Olympic countdown. Yes, I studied abroad in the winter leading up to the summer 2012 Olympic Games in London. I was not there for the Olympics. I had I went home in like April, but I was there for the run up to it. And I specifically remember seeing tons of signs. Was Boris Mayer at the time? He I think he was. There were signs from Boris Johnson being like, clean up our city. Um, because people are coming and it, we need to make sure that it's clean to like show off to the world. I remember seeing ads like that and I remember them saying that they wanted the shard completed before the 2012 Olympic Games, but there was something about like they were kind of at the top of it, but they weren't entirely sure if they were going to hit that goal. And then there was the 2012 Olympic countdown, which I, sh yeah, there's the picture, terrible picture. But this was in Trafalgar Square, counting down. It was such an exciting thing to feel like I was a part of this run up to the Olympics. And I think in a way was more of a glimpse into actual London life than if I had like visited during the Olympics because it was like real Londoners thinking all of these people are coming. What are we going to do? Is everything ready for them? And I just felt like I got an insight, I guess, into the city. Um, okay, so that's cute. Trafalgar Square is so close to the River Thames that you can see Big Ben from the center of it. 
I have been waiting to take pictures of the river at night, so I trekked it over there and spent a few minutes with the 8,000 other tourists that also like the view. This is the London we all dream about, people. I'm just so positive and optimistic. Um, and also, as I said in my other video, I wasn't doing this with anybody. I was out there exploring on my own because I wasn't going to wait to see if anybody wanted to go with me. And that's what gave me the feeling that I could come to London again. I could move here. I could make it more permanent and get around and enjoy myself and not have to wait on other people. Never wait for other people to do stuff that you want to do. If you want to travel, if you want to take a day trip, if you want to do whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter if nobody wants to go with you. Just go do it. So there's my nighttime picture. Of course, who could forget Big Ben, which is probably the only London landmark that I could have correctly identified before I arrived. Look at that tower. At seven o'clock, I walked back down the river to the show, which was called Master Class, about an American opera singer. I, mm, I vaguely remember this. It was interesting and really well done, and I'm always so thrilled to see friends, so it was a great night all around. Today started with class in the morning, and then one of my roommates, Christina, and I <clears throat> headed off to the British Library. Oh, I love the British Library. I don't have any pictures of the library other than this, because you aren't allowed to take pictures in the exhibits, and there are scary guards who watch you to make sure you follow the rules. But it was incredible to stand in a room with original Shakespeare works, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, there were original lyrics by the Beatles, hence the title of this post. See, I tie everything together. I know that even after even a lifetime of exploring, I could never fully discover everything London has to offer. I think they should have just hired me as their like mascot. But it is moments like these where it really hits home that I could not be having this experience anywhere else in the world. Yes, you could not be seeing Big Ben anywhere else in the world. Good observation. Just for kicks, here is a picture of Christina and I. We are bundled up because in weather related news, it flurried in London today. I am not actually sure that my three pound coat, again, pound sign in the wrong place, was built for these kinds of temperatures, but we made it through. That's my coat, everybody. And that awful hair. Kind of an awful color coat too, um, but I remember being very excited about it. I'm floored that tomorrow was already Wednesday in the beginning of February. Time is flying, but I'm doing my best to appreciate every second of every minute of every day and already wondering how I can fit London into my future ventures. Well, Girl Gone London, let me tell you, you fit it right, it just slots in so perfectly. Um, and then I sign off until next time, XOXO. I have never written XOXO in my life. This is the first time I've seen it. I think, was Gossip Girl big at the time? Maybe I was trying to be like Gossip Girl. Here's a picture of some child looking at a fountain. That's cute. A quote I thought to include. I'm leaving because the weather is too good. I hate London when it's not raining. Trying to pump myself up a little bit there, clearly. <gasps> no. <laughs> this is a picture of Shrek the musical and it's just come back to me that I saw it. I wonder, oh, there's me getting ready for the show. Shrek the musical at Drury Lane. Oh God. I literally went and saw Shrek the musical. And you know what? I bet I felt the entire time like I was the most cultured person ever. Um, no shade to Shrek the musical. I love a good musical, but I just love that this was my choice of like cultural activity in London. Okay. Um, Hyde Park. I don't think I've read this one in my other video. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Hyde Park. Happy Thursday from London. The morning started with a 9.30 a.m. class called Advertising and Marketing in Britain. I am not an advertising or marketing major, but a lot of public relations also has to do with selling, so it fits in nicely and is a really interesting class. That's nice. In case you were wondering, in case you were wondering, and Britain has an anti-sell culture, which means that they do not, capital not, like being sold to. True. This means that advertisements and campaigns over here often do not even focus on the product they are promoting. Absolutely true. If anybody has seen like the Lloyd's commercial with the horses, hardly ever mention it's about a bank. I'm like, are they, what are they selling? Pony rides? I have 
Um, yeah, I've seen entire commercials that have nothing to do with anything. And then at the end, there'll be a quick flash of whatever the product name is. Anyway, now you know I'm actually learning some things besides how to lose my Oyster card, which finally came in the mail. Let's continue. After class, I'd planned to go straight to High... High Kensington Street. Is that what it's called? Like the High Street in Ken... Is it called High Kensington Street? I know Kensington has a High Street. I don't... I don't know. Which is just a street full of European shopping. What is European shopping? There's like a TK Maxx, which is basically a TJ Maxx. What did I, what did I think they were selling? But the sun ended up coming out. So I decided to take advantage of the skies and head to Hyde Park. I had yet to see Hyde Park, even though it's probably the most famous. Here we go. Nice, nice picture of the park. See some greenery. Oh, I'm checking out the lake. Bad pictures here. From this vantage point, it was hard to tell what was to come, but after walking further down, oh, yep, some nice swans in Hyde Park. I don't just mean one swan, I mean tons and tons of birds. Like, where did all these birds come from? I have a real obsession with birds and parks. But yeah, this part of Hyde Park can be quite filled with swans. A little bit scary if you're afraid of birds. The following picture was taken right before I fled in terror. Look at that picture, action shot. Apparently, I'd never seen a swan before because I came home with over a hundred pictures of them in various positions. See, I'm getting the self-deprecating humor already. Nice swan shots. After starring in my own remake of The Birds, never seen The Birds, I did head back to High Kensington Street. So far in London, I've seen one television commercial for Walt Disney World Orlando. To I'm the same person 10 years later. All I do is talk about the sun in Disney World. So far, I've seen one television commercial for Walt Disney World Orlando, two Disney stores, and this Mickey Mouse shirt in H&M. This explains the insane amount of British tourists riding Space Mountain every day. <laughs> That's true. A lot of British people do like going to Disney on holiday. But I like that I took this picture in H&M. Oh, that's what I thought was European shopping. I seem to remember H&M. H&M didn't, wasn't like in our area in the US for a long time. And I remember when it came to our local malls, everybody was like, oh, the European shopping has come. After walking around Kensington High Street for a little while. Yes, Kensington High Street is what it's called, not High Kensington Street, you moron. I decided to try and go back to Hyde Park to capture the sunset, which ended up far exceeding my expectations. That's a nice picture. Look at that sky. Like in Pittsburgh, the sun is a rare sight here in the winter. I'm just on an auto reel talking about this. The past four or five days have been overcast and rainy. Well, it's like February, so yes. I'm not really affected by the grayness here. Oh, different time. Just because there is so much else going on, like Shrek the Musical. Plus, everyone looks more posh with an umbrella. I feel like Londoners don't even carry umbrellas. They just like have a raincoat or they just grin and bear it. But when the skies do clear, London completely transforms into the magical, wonderful place that I always thought it would be. I just, I was so taken in by everything. Nice sunset shot. Okay, culture shock, we did that one. So I think I see some snow pictures. So let's see what this says. A winter Wonderland. Welcome to this Sunday edition of London Lessons, L wait, of London Lessons, where we will discuss why you should always carry extra change in your purse and not buy winter boots in Florida. And oh, how it is the most beautiful city in the world and even more so when it's blanketed in snow. Oh. Last night, my flatmates and I decided to make a trip to Harrods, the famous London department store, and then find the original London Hard Rock Cafe. The Hard Rock Cafe is perhaps the most touristy thing, thing I can think of, um, but I guess I'm just embracing it. To my delight, to my delight, delight everybody, to my delight. We walked out the front door into the beginning of last night's snowstorm. I remember this night. I remember the snowstorm. I have never seen as much snow in London as this 10 years ago. 
This is only my second winter in snow possible climates and the only snow I saw in Pittsburgh this year was in October. So I have been wishing and dreaming of seeing snow in London for the past month. After it's like a Christmas movie. After making our way to Knightsbridge where all the rich people live. Yes, they do. We went into Harrods. Ah, fancy bags. It's hard to explain Harrods because it is unlike anything in the States, but imagine a seven story department store with a dress code for shoppers. Does Harrods have a dress code? It wasn't like I was fancily dressed back then. So I don't know what their dress code would be like no shoes, no shirt, no service. It was lined with rows and rows of designer brands. Harrods claim is that you can buy absolutely anything there, which I'm inclu included to believe inclined to believe I meant after seeing signs for Pet Kingdom and the entire section devoted to treadmills. Here, you can buy a Prada ski jacket. Wow, I have not been to Harrods probably since then, going basically as a tourist. Why would I go to Harrods these days? Um, to set the scene even further, we actually overheard this conversation. Woman, how much is this coat? Harrods employee, 60,000 pounds. Woman, do you have it in a small? Cut to me and my flatmates about to have a heart attack. We were even in the same square mile as a coat that cost 60,000 pounds. Pound sign in the wrong place. We also stumbled across the toy section where Adam, whose job title was toy demonstrator, showed us how easy snow created a snow-like substance that would never melt. Much appreciated, Adam, that there is real snow outside. So thanks anyway. Getting a little sassy. I see seasonal reductions here. So now it only costs $16.95 for fake snow as opposed to $19.95. After Harrods, we found the London Hard Rock Cafe. Unfortunately, there was a two hour wait. There was a two hour wait at the Hard Rock. Guys, top tip, unless you are like a Hard Rock die hard fan, you don't need to go to the London one. There are lots of other places to eat. It was already 8 p.m. So we took our poor people wallets and headed to Pizza Hut for an end to our night. Ah, Pizza Hut spans the countries. Everybody loves a Pizza Hut. This morning, I woke up early and threw on my closest jeans and sweatshirt in an effort to make it outside before the snow melted in the rain that was forecast to start in the early afternoon. The first stop was Hyde Park, which is quickly becoming my favorite spot. Been there twice. Quickly becoming my favorite spot. That's beautiful, though. Look at that. Look how much snow in London, you guys. It must have been a couple inches. Look at it on the bench. From Hyde Park, I made the easy walk to Green Park, right outside Buckingham Palace. The longer I live here and the more I explore, the easier it is to realize how close all of central London is and how all of the major parks and landmarks are connected. That's a good observation. Central London is relatively small. Um, if you're talking like central, 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 and you can walk a lot more than you think because people often jump on the tube but a lot of places you can walk. Okay. I also stopped to make a snowman, which is where our life lessons come into play. London parks are mostly just grass. What did I expect? So there were few snowman face building materials like twigs or rocks. However, the money system here is big on coins. Did you know that Brits? You're big on coins. They do not have an equivalent to the $1 bill. For instance, their one pound denomination is a coin. So I had plenty of resources for the eyes. I also thought to wear gloves, which was a good choice. The only <laughs> this girl here has been in the snow like one time in her life. I'm walking people through cold weather, basically. The only downside was that my 20 dot. Why would I put the dollar sign there? I'm my $20 snow boots from the Target aren't actually meant for the snow, it seems. I survived just fine, but my feet were a little wet and frozen when I got home. Oh, there's my snowman. Look at all that snow. I mean, yeah, it's not feet, but for London, that's a lot. That's so cute. Also, I feel like a little sad that I just, a lot of these posts are about doing stuff by myself, which I know I said earlier in this video, I'm proud of myself for, but equally I'm like, where were your friends? Why were you out building a snowman by yourself? After attempting to supplement my perpetually warm childhood, I waded through the snow a bit more until my iPod was almost dead. 10 years ago, everybody, if you're new here, an iPod was what we had before, iPhones and smartphones, which was after MP3s, which basically all it did was play music. I know if you're new to this world, that will confound you, but yeah, it just played music. 
My feet were mad I was too cheap to buy real snow boots. The rest of the afternoon has been spent in the warmth of my flat, lounging around and eating far too many chocolate cookies from Sainsbury's. That sounds nice. Now I will leave you by sounding philosophical with one of my favorite quotes that sums up how I feel about life in London and making snowmen by myself on cold Sunday mornings. Quote, in the middle of winter, I at last discovered that there was in me an invincible summer. I do love that quote, but I think it was more about um, achieving things when everything was bleak in your life, not so much actual winter, but I appreciate my attempt at inspiration here. Okay, let's see if we can find anything else. One step behind, read that before. One about my birthday, we could do Stealing of the British Museums. Did that one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Science Museum. Okay. Let's talk about Italy. Because that is where I went on spring break. And I call it the one where I go to Italy. Clearly a Friends reference. Didn't even really watch Friends that much back in the day. I have spent the past 20 minutes thinking of how to open this glimpse into the past week of my life, but really there is no way to talk about your spring break in Italy without sounding pretentious or delusional or both. Yes, to an American audience, talking about your spring break in Italy is absolutely pretentious. Obviously in the UK where it's much easier to go to Italy, it's not so much, um, but I at least was self-aware that it was a really, really crazy experience for somebody who had grown up in the US thinking that Italy was um, someplace that I'd probably never get to. Plus, I don't wanna turn into one of those people who come home from their travels with a 2000 picture slideshow and then make their entire, entire social network sit on the couch and marvel at the time they ate a scoop of gelato and then another and then another. Suffice it to say that Italy was awesome and beautiful and warm, which made our late February spring break all the better. Hmm. We started by flying from London to Venice, which included a complimentary view of the Swiss Alps. I have not fact checked this. I don't know if that actually was the Swiss Alps, but it looks very nice. Oh, this was something about the plane. After two bus rides, one in a land bus and one in a water bus, so cultured, so cultured. We were there in the heart of Venice. It is the one place I've always said I wanted to visit. God, I probably just watched some like travel network show. Didn't know anything about it. And I wasn't disappointed. Granted, you could probably drop me anywhere in Europe and I wouldn't be disappointed, but still. This girl has yet to go to Paris. That's a good picture. I'm an exceptionally light packer, which has saved me more times than I can count, including the time we had to make it over the giant Rialto Bridge in search of our hostel. Oh, hostel life. That's cute. I would never. Not these days. Here I am, sans luggage, standing at the top of the Rialto Bridge and taking part in the time-honored tourist tradition of having your friends take pictures of you in front of various landscapes slash monuments slash slight sites that you probably can't name but are probably important. I do have an understanding of maybe how much I don't know, which I appreciate. Um, we didn't get in later in the afternoon. We decided to grab dinner near the canals, wander around the markets. Even if we were ready for a night out though, you guys, I'm not a night out kind of person. I wasn't then, I'm not now. I would have never been ready for a night out. Venice shops shuts down at 7 p.m. And that is not an exaggeration. Not an exaggeration, because I know Americans tend to exaggerate, but that is not an exaggeration. Maybe it's because the city is filled with more tourists than locals. So most people who run the markets and stores leave the city for the night, but the streets are pretty empty and dark after the sun goes down. Very out of focus, but nice. The next day was spent in San Marco, my favorite place in Venice. Girl, you've been there for like six hours. Embarrassing fact, I actually said the words, I feel like I'm an Epcot, so sue me. You spend your entire life traveling by hanging out in the World Showcase and all of a sudden your reality is warped. You win, Walt Disney, you win. If you don't understand this reference, there's a theme park um, in Disney World in Orlando called Epcot and there's the World Showcase where they have different country, basically mini theme parks of different countries and it has everything from like China, Japan, Italy is one of them. So I had grown up going to Disney World. So clearly I went to the actual Italy and was like, this looks like the Italy at Disney World. That's what I'm talking about. 
Not to mention the fact that I found both the Venice and Rome Disney stores and might have accidentally, on purpose, bought a Roma-themed Mickey pin. No shame. I am the most basic person ever before the word basic was even used to describe people like me. After spending the morning in San Marco, we walked around the coast of the islands, stopping for lunch, and then wandered around the smaller bridges and into the residential area where clothes dried in the afternoon sun and boats sputtered down the waterways. Oh, so quaint. I was pretty flexible the whole trip, agreeing to go wherever others wanted to go. That sounds like me. I am pretty flexible. I won an award back in the US when I was in college. We did like superlatives on our floor because it was like in our dorm. And I won best, best roommate because I was basically the most chill and flexible, which basically meant that people would do stuff and I would just not say anything about it. Um, and they would want to, so here probably people wanted to do things and I disagree, but I didn't say it, which again, I'm preparing for my life as a Brit. So it's not that I was like actually that chill. It's just, I would never say anything if anybody was doing something that annoyed me. There we go. Okay. This one night I was so determined to go back to San Marco and see a Venetian sunset. Luckily everyone was down for it. And I don't even care if this makes me like 90 years old. Just look at it. How would looking at a sunset make you 90 years old? That was a good sunset. I remember that moment. I remember how exciting it was. From Venice, it was off to Rome. Okay, I'm boring myself. Blah, blah, blah. Here's Rome. Good idea. We also made it to the Vatican, where we took a tour of the museum and then sat inside the Sistine Chapel. I don't really remember this. Wait, let me rephrase that. We ended up taking a tour of the museum and then sat inside the Sistine Chapel. What? That is some serious culture right there. Americans are so obnoxious, including myself. No pictures were allowed inside and I was tempted to try. <sighs> but I know enough about life to realize that you don't just roll up in the Pope's house and then break the rules. No, you don't. Here's a picture of one of the ceilings in the Vatican painted in the high Renaissance. I couldn't even tell you what high Renaissance meant. I bet I just probably saw that on online. We didn't go inside St. Peter's Basilica, but we did stand outside and take pictures. The weather was working in our favor with Rome reaching up to 75 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. Hmm, I'd like to go back to Italy. Aside from the obvious historical sites, Rome was also filled with a lot of markets and side streets that held restaurants and apartments and shops for people to live their daily lives. Yes, Rome is a city where people live and not just where 19 year olds go on spring break from their study abroad. This seems like a good time to mention what I ate the entire week, which was essentially a very combination of pizza, spaghetti, mm, chocolate cannolis and gelato. Mm. I ate a few pieces of fruit in there. Don't think you did, but that was it. Luckily we spent all week walking. So I didn't come home needing a stint on the biggest loser. Italy has some good food, doesn't it? That's a nice picture. Overall, I found Venice to be a better looking city than Rome, but only because it's on the water. On the other hand, I would never choose to live or study in Venice while I could easily see how someone would choose to spend months or years in Rome. We only spent six days between the two cities, so clearly I'm qualified to make these statements. And it was enough to get a taste of Italy, but you would obviously need much more time to get a real feel for how the city runs. I've spent almost two months in London and there are still moments where I have no idea where I am. I've spent 10 years in London and there are still moments when I have no idea where I am. Speaking of London, I am thrilled to be back. We were only gone for a week, but by the last day, I was dying to get back to life here. London may be cloudy and it may be cold and it may be in the midst of tearing apart the city for the Olympics. See, told you but I would not go back and choose any other place to call home for these four months, <clears throat> 10 years. Until next time, Italia. Coliseum with the moon behind it, everybody. Okay, I can't do any more of, of talking to my 19 year old self. So I'm gonna end this video there. I think there are a couple other posts, but I think I've covered most of them. Oh, well, there's some pictures of me with like a pony. You got the gist, right? Um. So yeah, so that was, that was me 10 years ago, 19, I'm 29 now, almost 30 in less than a month. 
and that's what I thought and felt and enjoyed about London and a lot hasn't changed but a lot has. Like I know where to put the pound sign uh, when I'm talking about currency. So that's positive. Hope you guys enjoyed the second blast from the past. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.